Well, hello everybody, Jeff here from the Learn Portrait Drawing channel, and in this video, we are gonna watch how I drew this portrait right here. If you've never been to this channel before, this is what you're in for. We're gonna sit down together, you're gonna hear my thoughts and my whole process behind drawing this. This drawing took about three hours, maybe a little less to draw in real time, so you can see it doesn't take a lot of time to draw something that looks really nice. So this video obviously isn't three hours long, but uh, it's sped up a little bit. Uh, but we are going to focus in this drawing on shadows, looking at shapes, not relying so much on our left brain, but using our right brain and our intuition to just feel the drawing out. And this is what we ended up with. So I hope you like it. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really means a lot to me. And it lets me know that these videos are helping you out and that you want to see more of them. So, with that being said, let's watch and learn how we drew this portrait right here. Okay, here we go everybody. So in this drawing, I do something a little bit different than what I've done on my previous ones. I wanted to start out by putting a background into the picture. And that, that's always good, at least for me, for two reasons. One, because when you erase, it really brings out things like highlights. And two, um, putting something on the paper like this makes it feel less... Um, oh God, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you don't have to be so careful. You know, when you start drawing on a white piece of paper, especially as a beginner, you get very self-conscious, you know, you look at every single line you make and you question everything. But when you start scribbling like we're doing here, put a background and kind of scribble, you're more free. You, you, you don't feel as much pressure and therefore your creativity comes through easier because you're not thinking so much. You're not getting your left side of your brain questioning everything you're doing. So see, right now we're just really loose. I'm just trying to get the, the sort of the, the overall shape of the picture. Just look at the picture you're drawing and get the overall shape. Just kind of get the outline. You know, you could see I did the outline of the head. And now I'm trying to just kind of maybe think where the, the, the hairline's going to be. This little V shape. So we're, do we're not doing any measuring really in this drawing. Everything you're going to see, there's very, very little measuring. And I actually love the way it turned out. I think sometimes when we measure and when we think too much, we get our brains involved when really art sometimes doesn't use our brain. It uses the creativity uh, and intuition that is, you know, intangible. Those things that you can't measure comes through when you just get rid of your brain. So that's what I try to do on this drawing. So as you can see here, we're doing the chin and coming up to the, the jawline. Uh, no measuring. This is just me guessing the overall shape, taking, taking my best guess. And when you do that, again, it's very free. It's very, uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I, almost empowering, you just, you feel more of the energy coming through you of creating art. It's not a chore, it becomes fun. And that's what art should really be about when you're doing these drawings, you know, it, it should be fun to be creative. You should have fun seeing that you're able to look at something and interpret that into a, a drawing or a portrait like this. So here we are, I kind of figure this is where the eyebrows are going to go, just based on the picture, looking at the, how high they up are, high, high, how, <laughs> uh, how high they are up on the head. So I'm just marking in here, just saying, okay, well, let's just say this is the eyebrows. And now what I want to do, I want to think of where the shadows are. So I'm not trying to draw a nose, I'm trying something different. I'm trying to just draw the shadows. So I see this shadow on this right hand side of the nose. And I'm seeing the eyes. I know those are going to be sort of shadows. So I'm kind of drawing just this blocky shadow for the eyes. It's not 
really drawing an eye socket. It's just drawing sort of a shape of where the eyes are in sort of a shadow, scribbly form. And what this does is it's giving my brain a way of just squinting my eyes. You know, right now, if you squint your eyes and look at what I'm drawing and look at the picture, squint your eyes, you can kind of see that the eyes are in the correct place. Notice I didn't draw eyes, but I just, by squinting your eyes and scribbling, we're kind of, we're kind of letting our, our intuition and our, our self know if we are proportionately drawing correctly. So again, I'm not drawing any features at this point. I'm just looking at the shadow, sort of the sh direction of the shadows, and scribbling those on there. And again, when you scribble like this, it takes a lot of pressure off you. Because, see, notice it doesn't look like anything. I mean, it looks like the drawing, but it doesn't, you know, you don't feel like you're going to mess anything up at this point because everything can be erased, everything can be changed. We're just trying to map out where we're going to begin. So I'm using soft vine charcoal during this stage, which you could see easily erases with your finger and easily smudges. But right here I'm just trying to lock in the size of the nose, you know where the shadows are, where it comes down to, this part of the lip. And I want to make sure that lip is about the right size. So doing this scribbling lets me see if I'm putting everything in the right place. And again, a lot of this time I'm squinting my eyes. I'm looking at the picture to squint, and that helps me see where the shadows are. So this is all shadow on this side of the face. Again, the eyes up here and up in here somewhere. Now, my last drawing, I did a lot of lines and a lot of Riley rhythms and things like that. And this drawing, I, I, I really want to just focus on form and shadows. Using shadows and form, or using the shadows to help... Um, navigate the form of the picture. So see, look what's already happened. We already have what looks like uh, a person. I mean, the, the scribble drawing is very similar to the, the reference picture, even though we don't have any details. So I really like this sort of way of starting a drawing. Um, it really helped me out, and I really did, it did help me capture the likeness of the person. This is probably one of my favorite drawings so far because it, it just came together so easy and so fast. So notice there's no blending. We haven't done anything specific. I'm not too sure if this left cheek needs to come in a little bit. Um, it looks like I might have it a little far out, so I'm just kind of using my hands to just get an idea of maybe... You know, again, I took very, very minimal measurements on this drawing. I mainly just did feeling. Does it feel like the nose is in the right spot? You know, does it feel like the angle is correct? Just try to trust my feeling a lot. And I'm just trying to lock in exactly where the sides of the nose is going to be, where the mouth's going to come down to. Um, and it looks like I'm correct. So see now, notice I switched to my pencil now. I'm not using the vine charcoal. Using the pencil, it's harder to uh, smudge. So I'll use my pencil when I want to put some marks down that I don't want to lose. See right here where I'm smudging my finger, that's all that soft vine charcoal. Look how easy it smudges. But the pencil won't smudge with your finger like that. So now that I'm kind of locking myself into where I want the drawing to, you know, I, I know sort of the size. I'll use my pencil to make more permanent marks on the paper.
Now in the picture I noticed there's a couple light marks around the corner of her mouth and sort of like on the corner of her nose. So notice I left those light marks in there on my drawing. I just smudged around them. And now that I've kind of smudged everything, I'm using my pencil to try and get the overall shape of the eye. So right here I'm looking at the top eyelid and I'm comparing that to where I put the eyebrow. I'm looking at that space that little white space in between the top of the eyelid and the eyebrow, I'm using that to let me know how high up to make the eye. And then once you have that high up top eyelid, you can work down. And so now I'm working down into sort of the bottom shape of the eye. Just trying to get the overall shape in there. And because we did the scribbling in the beginning, see now I know this is where the eye is supposed to go. I didn't do any measuring, I didn't draw any grid lines, I didn't draw any, uh, you know, reference lines. This is all just based on intuition and what we feel is correct. So see, we're trying to look at shapes, a lot of shapes. There's that shape above the eye. You got this sort of shadow that comes down on the side of the eye. So I was putting that in there. And she has this little dark spot under her eye. So I'm just darkening under the eye just a little bit. Everything looks really dark right now, but that's okay. At this stage, we're just kind of mapping in shadows, looking at the shapes they make. So see, there's a, I'm forming the shape of the brow below the eyebrow. It kind of makes like this rectangle shape. So lo look at shapes as much as you can and just try and draw shapes. A lot of artists say that and as, as a beginner, you hear it with your ears, but one day it'll click. And for me, it's really starting to click how important that is. Every line I draw now, I'm looking, what shape is it making? You know, I'm looking at the eyebrow and the eyelid, and I'm going, what shape does the eyebrow and the eyelid make? Don't look at anything else in the drawing. Just look at whatever you're drawing, whatever line you're making, whatever value you're putting down, look at what's next to it, and ask yourself what kind of shape does that make and then you're focusing on making the shape correct you're not focusing on I have to draw an eye correctly I have to draw this correctly no you're just looking at a shape and when you draw shapes it ends up being much easier for you to um, understand so even in here when I'm drawing the eye I'm not thinking about drawing the eye I'm looking at what shape does the dark circle make to the white part of the eye? What kind of triangle does that make? What kind of size triangle is that? Now I'm, I'm doing this, I'm noticing, this is another thing to, to realize, um, and I kind of messed up here, is this eye I'm working on, I made it a little bit small. Um, and I end up noticing that soon. I was, I was focusing too much on the eye, making the eye look correctly, that I wasn't looking at the proportions to the rest of the picture. So that's another um, thing that can get in trouble is when you're looking at making shapes, don't just make the shape. You know, I made the eye look correctly, but I didn't have it proportionate. I made it a little too small. Because you also, when you're making your shapes, you have to look at the overall picture and compare that shape, the size of it, to the size of something else. So I'm noticing, I'm slowly noticing here, notice the space in between the eyes, how big it makes the nose look. And I want to say, based on how I'm drawing, see right here, I'm slowly starting to notice that 
whoa, there's a little, there's a lot more space between this shadow of the nose and the eye. So now I'm starting to see, wait a minute, maybe this eye is a little too small. So I'm taking a measurement of the eye, I'm kind of comparing it, and I realize, yep, there's a little too much space in between the eyes. And when you have too much space in between the eyes, you make the bridge of the nose look large, look wider. And I didn't want that. So now I'm kind of looking at where the eyes go down. And this is sort of the only measuring I kind of do in the drawing. So I'm trying to see like where the eyes go and I, I just, something doesn't feel right. And if something doesn't feel right to you, this is the time to change it. So see, we, we weren't pressing very hard, so I just lightly erased it. And now I can bring the eye a little bit closer. So right about in here is kind of where the start of the eye is going to be. Notice it's not very much, but it's enough to, to bring it closer. And I'm noticing the eye starts about where the eyebrow is, so I move the eyebrow over more. And now I can begin making that shape again with the eyelid and the eyebrow. Looking at that space between the eyelid and the eyebrow and forming that sort of triangular shape. So now it's the upper lid and I'm looking at the space between the upper lid and the line above it that I drew. Always trying to be aware of how much space I'm leaving. So it looks like I'm almost drawing in the same exact spot I did before, but it's very slightly moved over that you can, you can kind of see the outline. A lot of times when you erase and you draw over, you, you want to draw over the same exact spot that you erased. Could be kind of challenging to, to not do that, but um, fortunately I succeeded in this and uh, the eye looks much better now. It was brought in just slightly, but sometimes just little changes is all it takes. And now the nose feels better to me. The distance of the eyes feel better to me. So I'm noticing right here the shadow. I don't want to lose this, so I'm kind of just blocking all this shadow shape in. I'm noticing where the shadows are dark, like it's a little darker right here by the nose, and the darkness comes up. And there's a little cast shadow right here from the nostril. And then looking closely, I could see, you know, right in here is sort of the, the nostril. I'm looking at the shape of the nostril too. And it's important again, when I'm drawing things like this, I'm not thinking, or I'm not trying to think about nose. Let's draw a nose. I'm just looking at, is this dark? Is this light? Is this, what shape is this? Is this uh, need to be darker than what's next to it? It's almost like a color by numbers too, when it comes to shading. You wanna always compare your values to something else on the picture. So right here, I'm just trying to make this shape again. Um, There's a lot of lines in this part of the drawing as I'm doing this, but uh, that's just my style, I guess. I, I try not to have a whole lot of lines, but when you're mapping things out, it's kind of hard not to. So underneath here on the lip, I see this shadow. You can you could see the shadow kind of comes down and makes this sort of triangle that comes out to the lip. So see this triangle? So I'm seeing that and I'm just gonna shade this in. And you're looking at the angles, so you look at the angle of the, the triangle, compare that, does that angle look correct? Yes, it does. 
And notice kind of how smudgy and blotchy everything looks. That's from that soft charcoal we did in the beginning. It smears really easy when your hand brushes over it. That's why I don't like using it for um, a lot of the drawing. I just use it for the beginning. And now this is where I only use uh, pencils. It's very, it's, it's harder to smear charcoal when you use uh, pencils like this. So we're just locking in kind of where the mouth is going to go. Comparing that to how far it comes out from the nose. This is the top of the lip right here. So I'm kind of looking at, you know, there's very little of the lip showing on the left side and more of the lip showing on the right side. So I'm kind of keeping in mind, you know, how far is the mouth come out? What is the shape of the lips? Right here I'm drawing just the, the middle part of the mouth in between the lips. I'm thinking how far down does the bottom lip come. And when I'm doing this, I'm also looking at the chin. So if I'm drawing the bottom lip about the right size, then, then I look at the chin and I go, does that leave too much chin? And that's when I can adjust the chin up or down. So here I'm starting to notice the lip looks about correct, but the chin now looks very big. You see that? You see how the lip, to, the, to me, the lip looks pretty good, the bottom lip, but the chin looks off. And so that's what happens a lot of times when you do portrait drawing and drawing in general. You draw one thing and then you realize it kind of makes something else need to be corrected. So here I'm starting to figure out, well, how do I shrink the chin? I can't just bring the chin up, it'll make her face look fat. So I need to bring in her cheek, which will then adjust the chin. So here we're gonna kinda try to bring in the cheek a little bit. So erase the cheek. Cause I'm looking at the space between where the mouth is and where the, the, the cheek is. Look at the picture, look where my mouth is, and look where her mouth is, and her, the, the left side of her face. Look how close that is to her mouth. I, didn't, I had it really far out, so I'm bringing it in. I'm looking at the distance between the mouth and the side of her face, and I'm adjusting that to what I already have. And now I just made a mistake because I connected it to the shadow of her eye, don't want that. So I just erase that part. And I'm going to start from up here. Using the soft charcoal right now because it's easy to erase. I'm not using the pencil. I'm using the soft charcoal just to give my brain something to look at. And then I need to round it out a little bit because that looks a little too... There we go. Now I'm kind of feeling okay, so I'm using my pencil since it leaves harder to erase marks. And see, we brought in the face a little bit. I need to adjust the chin a little bit, bring it up a, just a little hair. A little bit higher than how I had it. And that, that already kind of feels a little better. So now I wanna kinda, sometimes what you gotta do is you gotta lock in certain features to feel better about the drawing. So I decided I'm gonna try and lock in the eyes a little bit, make them look a little more realistic, um, just so the drawing starts to come to life. And she's looking into the light source, so she's got these really great, bright highlights. And you could see how just the eraser brought out that highlight, and it, it already makes the eye look a little more realistic. So I'm erasing to kind of make this shape here. Notice that's really white. It's really, I'm kind of just raising the, uh, the eyebrow a little, or the, uh, the upper eyelid. And I'm adjusting the eyebrow to that. No, trying, to, trying to keep in mind the distance between the eyelid and the eyebrow. 
And what that did is it made the eye open a little more. It made the eye a little bit larger. A lot of the likeness I find is in that, the space between the eyelid and the eyebrow. So that's one of those important measurements you want to keep in mind. Now again, on this side of the nose, which is all in shadow, I'm trying to notice now where the dark shadows are and the light shadows. So right here, it's really dark around the nostril. And the bridge of the nose is a lot darker. And then it kind of fades out down towards the, the cheek. So we're just adding some value now to the lips with the pencil, kind of making, again, the pencil's harder to smudge. So I'm adding these sort of scribble shadows in, things that I'm going to smudge or things that I'm going to blend later. I'm kind of noticing the, the shadows of the chin. And I'm asking myself, what shape do these shadows make and is it making the chin look too big or not? So see, I still need to bring the chin up just a little and look how much of a difference this is going to make. It kind of made a little angular, so let's correct that, round it out just a little. But see, I'm trying to look at the distance. I'm trying to look at the shadow here. See, I'm just drawing a shadow. The shape of the shadow. I was realizing if I drew that shape before, it was going to be way too big. That shape was big. Therefore, the chin was going to be big. So just looking at the shape, the shadow shapes, it helped me to correct the proportions of the chin. And I kind of lost the hairline here, so I'm putting the hairline back in. Just so I have, have that there as a reference point. So we'll kind of add a little bit of detail to this eye too, like we did last time. Trying to shade around the highlight. And she's got very light colored eyes, so I didn't want to color it in too dark. But you want to color it in dark enough so that the highlight stands out. So that's looking a lot better. So see, we've already kind of locked in where the face is, and I'm, here's the hair kind of frames in the face. And I'm just using my soft vine charcoal to kind of get the feel of the hair, the direction of the hair. Looking at the picture, seeing where the dark lines are and what direction are they in. Notice I'm using, I'm going in the direction of the hair here. If I see the hair curling to the left, I will curl it to the left with the charcoal and then if, when, I'm, when I'm not sure I'll just kind of scribble in darkness so right here there's just sort of a shape just kind of leave that in there it's sort of the beauty of drawing in this sort of fashion is you can jump all over the place the drawing sort of slowly comes together as a whole I'm not just working top down and rendering like a like a photocopier. I'm kind of jumping around, feeling the drawing come together. This is all in shadow, so I'm just shading this all in. This is where I'm kind of looking at the shadow of the chin. Shadow of the bridge of the nose. Looking at that light space and dark space and forming that in there. And notice just by focusing on shapes and shadows, we're already getting something that looks like the person. 
You might have just saw a quick cut of the camera. That was me um, taking my first break. So I took a break and came back to this drawing, probably the next day actually. Um, what you see right here was about one hour, almost one hour of drawing into the picture. The video sped up two times the speed, so you're seeing me at this stage draw twice as fast as normal, which is perfect for these videos because you could still see me draw everything and, and understand what I'm doing but it's fast enough to where it, it saves you half the time instead of watching a three hour video you're only watching you know an hour and something which I think is actually really perfect amount of time if you guys like this kind of narration video do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button let me know I always think it's neat to watch these kind of videos. It's like you're sitting down with the, the artist, hearing their thoughts, you know. It's like we're sitting together, just watching artwork, hanging out together. If you want to say something, you could just leave me a comment. I respond. It's kind of a fun format. I like this. If you like it too, let me know. So here I'm just kind of mapping in some of the hair. I'm really not working on the hair at this point. Uh, again, it's more scribbling the direction of the hair. I'm looking at where the dark spots are of the hair. And I'm using my pencil to pencil in the dark spots. So right here it's dark. I'm just kind of scribbling in hair. And again, a lot of that helps helps you feel like you're it, it helps the drawing come together and it also puts the face in perspective because now I can look at the shadows of the face and ask myself if I'm gonna need to go darker or lighter things like that and when you're trying to train yourself to learn shapes just focus on shapes. Hair is actually a really good thing to, to work with because there's a lot of shapes in the hair. You know, you look at the dark shapes of the hair. Look at these like semicircles, these trapezoid shapes, these, re you know, there's all kinds of shapes in hair. You just look at the dark spots and go, oh, okay. That looks like a big kidney bean. Or that looks like, you know, think of things that they looks like and just try and draw those shapes. So I'm just kind of blending in the hair a little bit. I'm, I'm using the blending stump. I don't normally use a blending stump, but I was kind of experimenting. I'm still learning myself, so I was kind of just seeing what does it feel like? What does this kind of blending tool feel like? Normally I use uh, some newspaper and just kind of rub the newspaper on the paper to, to sm smudge everything. Uh, but like I said, I just wanted to use the blending stump and try different tools, see how I like them. Notice we haven't started blending the face yet. We're going to do that pretty soon. But this right here is a real prominent curl in the hair, so I want to make sure I got that down. Again, looking at the dark, dark areas of the hair and using my pencil to kind of add those dark areas. Just like when you're drawing a, a, a portrait, you don't want to focus on drawing a nose, drawing an eye, drawing... You just want to look at shapes. Like I said, the same is with hair. And so by, I'm trying to ask myself at this stage, where are the dark shapes? And if you just focus on shapes and drawing shapes without thinking about it too much, then when you step back later and look at the picture, you, your brain goes, oh, wow, look, I drew hair. Or I drew whatever you know I'm drawing. You don't think about it because you're just thinking about the smaller things. But... Overall, the drawing starts to come together. So I'll always just draw shapes and then smudge it in. Sometimes smudging um, takes away a lot of the 
shape that you drew, so then yeah, I might have to go over it again. But it just adds layers to the drawing that really make it look more realistic. Now here I'm using my uh, pencil eraser to kind of erase highlights. So just like we, I looked for dark spots of the hair, I'm looking at light spots of the hair. Like right here, it's all light, so I'm using my eraser to kind of add these light shapes. Excuse me. So right here, like there's, you know, light spots. It's hard to see because I didn't, I didn't put a lot of uh, charcoal down. But we'll eventually come back to that. So let's start blending in the face a little bit. So I'm using my homemade blending stump, which is just some newspaper. And I'm starting to blend in all the stuff we did on the face and I'm looking at the picture and I'm going I'm trying to blend in the direction of the shadow so like under the eye I'm kind of blending in that direction trying to keep in mind the form of the face you know see I'm blending right here down towards the nose and then down towards the side plane of the nose. And I always start blending with the shadows and I carry that shadow out towards the cheek. So it helps make it a smoother transition. See, and I'm trying to keep also these light spots. Remember I said by the corner of the mouth, you could see on the picture there's like a light spot. So I'm gonna try and keep that in there and only lightly shade over it. This part's all dark, so I can kind of go dark here. And I'm noticing that dark shadow shape, how it all it connects down to the chin, and that kind of carries up towards the lips. So I'm keeping that in there. And see, now I'm lightly going over the, everything else trying to smooth things out as best as I can. And this stage is always fun. This is when you start, it starts really starting to look um, three-dimensional. It starts to take on form because we're blending in these values. And you always want to ask yourself, you know, where is the light at? We know the light shining from the left-hand side of the picture. So keep that in mind. That's then you know where the shadows are going to be and where the lights are going to be. Sometimes when you look at pictures like this, it's hard to see where shadows are. I mean, sometimes you know, some shadows are really obvious, like the, the right-hand side of the picture. We know we, we see the shadow. But on the left-hand side of the picture, look at the left-hand side of the picture by her mouth. It's very hard to see a shadow there. But I, you could see on my drawing right now, I have the shadow on the left-hand side of her mouth. And it's because I know there's a shadow there. It's just harder to see. So at this stage, we're just blending in trying to smooth out what I can before I start adding more charcoal. I don't know, but I must have been uh, taking a little sip of coffee or something there when the... <laughs> seemed like I didn't do anything for a second. So... Now I'm starting to refine a little bit. I'm starting to smooth things out, erase what I don't need. And what I'll do is I'll erase and then I will blend. Erasing to take off some of the charcoal and then I will add charcoal to it and blend it back. So I'm trying to notice right here it's really dark. I'm not drawing an eye, 
See, even though it looks like it's probably drawing like the eye, the eyelashes right there, I'm not thinking eyelashes, I'm just thinking it's dark and it makes a light shape below it. So I'm looking at that light shape and I'm drawing the shadow around it and I'm blending that shadow. And this really, really helped me out, this, this way of drawing on this picture. I'm just looking at shapes you know, this makes a little bright shape up here. So I'm just drawing that shape, that little bright shape, and looking at how the direction is. And see, now that we're looking back, we're seeing the picture, we're seeing it come together. We're going, wow, that's pretty neat. But when at the time when I'm drawing this, my brain is only thinking about the shape that I'm looking at and comparing it to whatever's next to it. So I know this, the bridge of the nose is going to be lighter up here. So I'm kind of lightening it and then knocking it back just a little bit. This is sort of this refining stage of the drawing. And right here, the side of the nose, if you look at the picture, it, there's no line. It's going to blend right into the nose. So this cheek is all hitting light. This is some of the lightest parts of the drawing. So I'm erasing all the charcoal that's there. And notice I'm gonna, I'm also gonna erase the side of the nose. I'm gonna try and make it blend right into the nose. Now first I notice there's a little line right here. So I'm kind of erasing and then drawing the eyelid underneath it. And it's, it's going to make this little mark on the eye. And I'm still, like I did in the beginning of the drawing, I'm doing a lot of squinting. So I will squint and look back and forth between my drawing and the reference picture. And that again helps you see what is standing out. You know, where, where the bright spots go. Is, is one spot brighter than another? And so see, look how light we're making this, this part of the nose. Where the light is hitting it. And we're asking ourselves, is this bridge of the nose, is this brightness the same brightness as the chin? Think of it like a color by numbers picture. Where, you know, you have a, a blank picture that has a bunch of numbers on it. You know, 1 through 10. And you want to color all the number ones the same color and all the number twos a different color. So you're asking yourself, you know, is this brightness, if this brightness is a, is a 10, then, you know, like right here on the, is the, the cheek, if the cheek is a 10, is the forehead a 10 too? Yeah, it kind of is. If we look at the left side of her face and say that white is a 10, then look up above her left eyebrow. That looks like it's about the same. So I'll keep those two about the same. The very tip of the bridge of the nose is about a 10. So I'll keep that the same. But the very tip of her nose is not a 10. And right here by the nostril, that's not a 10. It's lighter, but it's, you know, if the, if the forehead's a 10, you know, then this nostril area is probably a you know, a five and a half or a six. So you're kind of keeping this value scale in the back of your head and comparing everything to each other. So under here, under the nose, it's lighter. So I'm, I'm erasing, but see, that just made it like a 10. It's not a 10. I ask myself, what is it? Well, it's probably about a little darker than, or about the same as the, the nostril. So I'm going to knock it back down, kind of make it about the same. And just blend the charcoal over it. So see, it left a lighter mark, but it doesn't stand out as much. I 
I'm trying to sh kind of shave this nose a little bit down a little bit. You don't see much of this side of the nose. So it looks a little funny, but again, I'm just asking myself, what do I see? What shape and an erase? So I don't see the side of the nose so much. So I'm kind of erasing the left side of the nose. I'm looking at the shadow shape that's on the, the ball of the nose. Right here on the side of the nostril, it's lighter, but then I gotta knock it back down. That's too bright. So I'll erase to make the shape and then I will blend to adjust the tone value. And again, I'm looking at the distance between the eyebrow and the eyelid right here. I'm not looking at anything else. And now I'm looking at the eyelid to the upper eyelid, that space. And then I'm seeing how dark it is. And I'm seeing it's really dark right there. It's about the same darkness as, as the corner of the eye underneath the eyelid. I'm seeing that's darker right here. And I'm asking myself, if this, what, what darkness number value is this? If, if the absolute darkest dark is a zero, what is this value? So you're just jumping through the drawing and comparing everything to something else. When you think of it like that, it all starts to come together. A lot of the key for drawing is observation. The best artists in the world are masters at observation. They observe things that beginners don't see they don't know to look for they might just you know beginners might just see a big shadow but really really good artists will see inside of that shadow there's different shadows there's darker shadows lighter shadows so that's sort of the key you know, like right now, if you look at the look at her nose, the shadow of the nose. Notice that along the bridge of the nose, up to the eye, it's darker. And as it goes towards the cheek, it's lighter. It's all a shadow. But see, there's different different weights of that shadow, different tone values. So I'm trying to get this lighter shape under the eye. So I'll erase and then I'll smooth it out. But see, I don't really have a lot of shadow under that eye yet. So I'm trying to work on that a little bit. Creating this light shape with my eraser. And then we can blend it back in, smooth it out. And I'm trying to get this, like I said, we don't really have a lot of the shadow underneath the eye. So I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to work on that, you know, this spot right here. And then I'm trying to blend that in the shadow side. Hopefully what you can do is you could, every time you see me do something on the drawing, you can kind of look over at the picture and learn and follow along why I'm doing what I'm doing. When you see, oh, Jeff is drawing a, a white area here, look over at the reference picture and go, oh, okay, I see what he's looking at. I see what he's doing. That's, that's what these videos are meant for. And that's where a lot of the learning is going to come in and, the, and a lot of the 
you're going to get the most out of these videos by following along. That's what I did. I, I swear to you, I've never taken an art class. Everything you're seeing me do here, I've literally learned from watching artists on YouTube. I didn't draw before any of this stuff. I haven't been drawing my whole life. I've only been drawing portraits for the last few years. And it hasn't been an everyday thing. For example, I think last year I might have only drawn three, three drawings. So when I say I've been drawing for a few years, it hasn't even been consistent. This has really been the most consistent I've ever drawn, where I'm drawing a portrait every week. And you learn from everything you do. And I learned so much from watching a few people on YouTube consistently watching videos just like this, where you could see a, a reference, you could see what they're doing, and you can hear them talk. And if you just take the time and watch this kind of video and listen to what I'm saying, you're going to pick up things. Subconsciously, you're going to pick up things. And when you start drawing, it's going to come through on your own drawings. And I'm not just saying that because I, I want you to subscribe or I want more views which is all great, by the way. So thank you for those who are subscribed to me and who are watching this. Uh, I really appreciate it. But I'm saying it because I know it works. Because I'm seeing how my own drawings have improved and I know what I did, which was watch a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of artists who did this exact same thing. You know, we're all attracted to certain types of people, certain types of teaching styles. So if you like my teaching style or you like my kind of video, uh, let me know. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's why I do this because I really want to help people. I know that this is this helped me, so I want to help others. So right here we're looking at the side of the face. I'm kind of putting a darker line just to mark the edge of the face. I'm seeing this dark part of the hair right here. And so I'm just trying to put in that dark shape there. And again, I'm using my pencil here to kind of make more permanent marks for the hair. But I'm just trying to reestablish some of the darker spots of the hair. Right here I'm noticing it's dark. It's a little darker in here, kind of where the hair comes together and it comes up over the top. I remember thinking like how much of this hair am I going to draw on the side because on the picture it's kind of cut off. So those are all choices you make as an artist of what you want to show, how much you want to show. Um, kind of gives you the freedom to do that. So I'm kind of darkening this side of the face for the same reason, just kind of locking in. This is where it's the edge of the face is going to be. I made it a little too dark and so I'm kind of shaping it a little bit. But I'm feeling very good at where this drawing is going. I really, the drawing I did before this, I did not capture the likeness of the person. Of course, I drew in a completely different style on my last portrait. Uh, but, and while that portrait did turn out okay, I wasn't really happy with it it didn't look like the drawing to me the drawing was more of a reference and not a, you know I didn't capture her likeness this one and hopefully you'll agree with me um, I, I, I feel pretty confident about it I made the drawing look like the picture and that is always sort of a goal of mine um, my style of drawing, if you like my style of drawing and you sort of want to draw like this style, you'll notice 
This is not a hyper-realism style. I'm not drawing something for you to look at and go, wow, I can't even tell that's a drawing. You know, there's a lot of artists out there who draw so realistically that you can't even tell what they're drawing is a drawing. It looks exactly like a photograph, and that is very impressive. But that is not my style, and that is not what I want to do. I don't have any desire to draw like that. Um, Like I said, I think it's an an impressive uh, feat of determination to draw like that, but it's, it's too tedious for me. If you see drawings like that, those things take hundreds of hours to do. They're literally drawing pixel by pixel and rendering their drawing like a photocopier. Um, And again, while that's impressive, that's not my style. That's not what I find appealing in my own artwork. Uh, I like basically what I'm doing here. I like making a drawing look like a drawing but make it still look like the person I don't I I don't try and draw anything cartoony or anything like that but I like it looking like a drawing and I should mention this style of drawing that I do it doesn't take that long this whole portrait that you're seeing here took me less than three hours to do three hours of drawing time and I like that I like being able to draw something that looks nice and only takes you know three to four hours max to do versus something that takes a hundred hours and looks exactly like a photograph I, I, I think I go on this sort of rant on a lot of my drawing videos so if you're a frequent Subscriber of mine, I apologize if you've heard this before, but I just, for me, I don't see the point in drawing something exactly like a photograph because then what's the point? I would just rather frame the photograph and hang the photograph in my wall. So I like this style of drawing. I like using charcoal, it's very, you get really good dark values, Um, and this style is very fun to do, and quick to do. So if you're looking at something like this, and you go, man, I want to draw, but I don't have the time to put in, you know, weeks and weeks of drawing to get something that looks like something. This, like I said, this took three hours to do. And when you keep watching these videos and seeing the different types, the different ways of drawing, because I do outline different techniques and different ways on my videos, um, find what's right for you. Find what you really like to do, um, which is really important. Don't just do what I'm doing because I'm doing it. Find what works for you and make it your own. When you do that, it becomes fun. It becomes fast. You can get a really good drawing in a very short amount of time. And you'll feel good. You'll feel good about yourself, about your skills. So here I'm using my finger to blend. A lot of times you'll hear artists say, don't use your finger. You can get oil all over the paper. Um, I'm using a sketch pad. This isn't like really expensive drawing paper. So one, that doesn't really uh, bother me. Two, uh, I I kinda know when and when not to use my finger. and at this stage of the drawing, when I've been holding on to charcoal and doing all kinds of things, there's no real oil on my finger. Um, so I'm not really worried about that. So 
so I'm putting in a little bit of sort of the detail here of the the clothing um I think maybe one regret I had on this drawing, looking back maybe, is, uh, you know, I spend, I spend a little bit of time on things I probably don't need to spend time on. Like, I'm trying to still find my own style when it comes to certain things, and, uh, at this stage, I'm still putting in the same amount of focus on this part of the drawing as I am the face. And to me, that's a mistake. Um, I don't want people's attention to go towards the clothing. So why am I spending time on it? So it's sort of a battle for me, or like I said, it's still something I'm learning about uh, how to how to do is you know, deciding what to focus on. And maybe, you know, maybe in the future, like making this part real blurry and really unfinished. And if you make something blurry and unfinished, it draws attention to the stuff that is finished. It's almost the opposite. You almost think if I got something that's not finished, you're going to focus on that. But if you do it correctly, it could be it can work in your favor. Leaving something unfinished could draw your attention to the other areas of the drawing that are done. And so that's the danger that I'm running into um, here is I'm, I'm putting in details and you don't want the attention to go towards, you know, I don't want the attention to go away from the face. Now at the end of this drawing, I do, I, I, th I think I'm pretty successful in, in the fact that um, your, your attention isn't going to go towards this area of the chest or the, the clothing, but um, looking back though, I do think that maybe I'll have to come up with a different approach to clothing, you know, don't put so much detail in. Now, fortunately, on her drawing, there's not a lot of detail. You know, there's a few dark shapes here in the in the jacket, and then like her collar is darker, so I, I left that darker. I wasn't sure, like you know, you got this green shirt right here, so I didn't know how do you make that look different than the outside of the jacket. Like right now, it looks about the same. So that's always a struggle. You're drawing in <clears throat> basically dark tones. So how do you differentiate between a dark green and a dark, you know, and a light black? You know, that's like a black colored jacket, but it's got light on it. So black is darker than green, but that black has light on it. And that green is lighter than black, but it's in the shadow. So it's like, <clears throat> these are all sort of questions that you have, you know, well, how do I make something look different than something else when I'm only using dark tones. So those are the challenges you have as an artist and there it's also the freedom you have as an artist. So I do think I make a little mistake here which I correct at the end and I, I think I might have corrected off camera. Um, but notice her jawline on the right hand side um, because my shadows got blurred, look at the chin, look at the shadow in between, look at the chin, then look at the shadow in between the, the, the chin and the jawline, and then look at the jawline on the right hand side. It's kind of where my hand is right now, my, but you'll notice I make the, uh, the angle of the right hand side of the face look really angular. It's kind of makes the chin look a little pointier than it needs to be. Like I said, I do end up correcting that in the final picture. So here I'm, I'm just trying to work a little more on the hair. I know the face is almost right where I want it to be, um, but the hair still needs detail. So I'm, 
I'm reinforcing the dark values of the hair using my finger to blend it in. And by adding more tone and blending, it's going to help me bring out the highlights when I go over again with the eraser. Now the forehead needs, the, the brightness needs to come up a little more. And then I'll blend it to kind of like not have the line so sharp. Just smooths it out a little bit. And at this stage of the drawing, it looks like uh, we're almost done. Now, I wanted this thing in the background, this like dark, notice in the background there's this dark tone. I thought that looked really cool to keep in there. So I'm kind of adding that in there. And it adds a nice little contrast too. It's not just one solid background color. But notice it also kind of blends in with the hair. So I have to still add some detail to the hair on the left side of the picture so it doesn't blend in with the background so much. I want the hair to look like it's in front of the background. So we're going to need to work on that. So here I'm kind of again on the chin, I'm, I'm trying to do the shadow shape. By the jawline over there where it's dark, it's cutting in just a little too much. So I, I'm gonna, like I said, I'll eventually fix the, the jawline. Oh, one other thing. I can't believe I didn't mention this. Um, this particular drawing, you won't notice, maybe, you probably didn't even notice, the camera angle is a little bit different than my last drawing and I don't really like it. This drawing, I, 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 I set up the camera to minimize the amount that my head came into the frame. But in order to do that, you're kind of looking at the drawing at an angle. You're not looking at it straight on. Uh, which is always very hard to do, by the way. It's, it's hard to get that straight on angle but you are seeing a skewed version of this picture so it does look a little more tilted than what I'm seeing now the very last shot of this video you'll see it you know straight on so you'll see what the picture looks like and it'll be a little bit different um, but I just wanted to point that out and I think the next video I might go back to a more straight on view even though that means you're gonna see my big head in the way a lot of the times but here I am trying to add more dark tones to the hair so it stands out from the background and a lot of times that's just adding charcoal and then rubbing it in adding charcoal, rubbing it in. See, so I'll get like this eraser now can bring out these little highlights because I put that that uh, charcoal in the background, now the eraser really brings out. See, look at this. See how, see how bright it brings it out? It gives the hair some more volume makes it gives that impression that light is hitting it right here so that's always a good thing to do when you want when you really want especially with like blonde hair or reflective things you want to add some charcoal down and then the eraser helps bring out this kind of stuff If you're still sticking with me and watching this video, again, I really appreciate it. I know it does, it's, it's quite an investment of your time to watch a video that's this long. Um, hopefully it's the right, the right length for you. You know, I, I do try and keep my videos between an hour and 15 and two hours long. Um, basically like watching a movie. Um, but if you're 
investing in your own art and your own development, it's really not a lot of time. Like I said, I watch videos like this all the time. I, I spend hours watching other artists. So if you're doing that with me, I really appreciate it if you're finding these uh, videos helpful. Um, I get a lot of great comments, people that say they like my commentary, they like my teaching style, they like the way I draw. Um, and that really encourages me to keep going with these videos. Um, and it, it, it helps me know that I'm doing something worthwhile. I'm not wasting my time. Um, and so let me know. If that, if that really helps you, I really appreciate it. Now, um, under here, I'm, I'm kind of noticing this darkness right here and how it's light underneath the chin. So that's why I was lightening up underneath the chin because there's some reflective light that's hitting it. And right here on the eye, there's a little highlight. So I'm trying to keep that in there. So I'm just noticing like I'm trying to this is where I'm adding some of the finer details like little strands of hair. She's got a lot of strands all over. So I'm just using my pencil to see just flick it a little bit and just do these little strands. Sometimes it's just little details like that that really add to the realism. So at this stage of the drawing, it's a lot of it's just final touches and smoothing things out. Notice we're not changing anything at this point. You know, the eyes are where the eyes are going to be. The nose is where the nose is going to be. You know, uh, at this stage of your drawing, it's more of you're asking yourself, uh, does this need to be darker? Does this need to be smoother? squinting your eyes, looking back and forth at the drawing, looking for those dark shapes. You know, right now, if you squint your eyes and look back and forth, you're just asking yourself, oh, I see a dark shape on the drawing. Do I have that same dark shape on mine? And if not, put it in there. And I really like how this turned out. Like if you look at her, the left hand eye of the picture in our drawing, how bright that reflective light is, you really get that feeling that she's looking into a light source. I really like how that turned out. I'm also going easy on the shadows here underneath the chin area. Um, just keeping them very subtle. Sometimes less is more. And so I'm keeping that in mind. Less is more. Don't just draw dark shadows. It'll, it'll make her look really like drawn in and sunken in. We don't want that. But we're actually uh, pretty close to finishing. Some of the things I was asking myself on this drawing is, you know, I, I wanted I wanted to press the contrast a little bit, but uh, I don't know if I did that successfully enough, if I could have made it even darker. Um, but I, did, I also didn't want to mess anything up. So I kind of just said, you know what? I'm kind of happy with how this is going. It's a three hour drawing. Uh, you know, it's not, you know, I could have spent five hours on it and probably taken it even to a 
different level than I did, but I, you know, sometimes you just got to know when you're done and go with it. Not to mention, you know, it takes me a lot of time to edit these videos. You know, it takes me, again, three to four hours to draw. Then I have to edit the video. Then I have to do what I'm doing now, which is watch the video all over again and narrate over it. Uh, you know, then I have to produce the video, upload it to YouTube. Like, that's why a lot of times it, only, it takes me a week. I, I only do one of these a week because it, it's actually a big investment of time. Um, so that's why I really am, I really do appreciate you if you watch this far into the video. Uh, and if you follow me, because it, re it really rewards me for my time and lets me know that I'm doing something that's helpful. So since this is sort of the final stage of the drawing, I'm just, again, I'm looking at erasing like this part of the nose. It kind of bleeds in to the cheek. There's no edge, so I'm making sure that that's there. I'm 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 making sure all the the highlights and the, or the the bright spots of the drawing are bright. I'm asking myself, does something need to tone down a little bit? So I tone down this part of the brow. I'm, it's not quite as dark as I had it. And I'm going back to what I said before. I'm looking at things that I have shadows, putting a number to it. You know, if this part of the, if this part of the forehead is a, you know, a number four with zero being absolute black and this forehead, you know, maybe the forehead's like a four and a half, you know, what else is a four and a half on the drawing? Oh, you know, maybe this part of the mouth. So make sure those are about the same, you know, just... You're just constantly asking yourself, does this need to tone down? Is this too dark? So that's what you see me doing, using my eraser to tone things down, blending it back together so it's smoother. You know, this is, I just, I'm trying to reestablish a little bit of the darkness here, the shadow side. So put some more charcoal down, blend it. Sometimes I use my fingers, sometimes I use the blending stump just because I'm, I'm still experimenting with, you know, different things blend different ways. So fingers working nicely at this stage. We're gonna correct this jawline a little bit. Like I said, it makes the, the chin looks a little pointier than it needs to be. So I actually, I'm gonna correct that soon when we cut to the final shot. But I'm just, you know, this stage of the drawing, it's all final touches. It's just checking the corners of the eyes, checking the darkness of the eyelids. Do I have the white of the eyes, you know, white enough? So I'm lightening that up just a little bit, just like that. But this is pretty much this is pretty much it. We are, we are in just the very final touches. There's a lot of, there's a less work going on here than in the beginning because there's a lot of, you know, me looking at it, sitting back, squinting my eyes, thinking, asking myself questions, coming back to it, you know, because the drawing's just about done at this stage. And now it's just, you know, like I said, here I'm working a little bit on the background. I want the background to kind of be a little more textured, make her look like she's in front of the background. 
you know. But that's uh, that's what happens at this stage of the drawing. You know, you might take a break and then come back, you know, take some notes on your picture. I didn't take any notes on this, actually. This really came together very, very nice. Um, I really, really enjoyed how this one turned out. It's probably one of my favorite drawings so far on this channel. And if you like it too, please hit that thumbs up button. I appreciate that. Leave me a comment if you have questions or anything. Even if you don't have questions, you can leave me a comment. I read all of my comments. So that's pretty much it. I'm just kind of erasing, you know, things that are like little smudges and thumbprints and stuff. But that that's pretty much it. So there it is. I think we captured her likeness pretty well. We got the direction of her head down pretty good. Um, I think it looks like her. And uh, yeah, I appreciate that. And if you have uh, any questions, let me know. Watch these other videos if you want to see more. There we go.